What's going on YouTube? Today's video is going to be on two rail kick shots. The first two rail kicking system is going to be Darren Appleton's mirror system. As you can see, I have this the table laid out already. On this side of the table, on the short rail, it's, it's labeled in halves. So this is a half diamond, one full diamond, a diamond and a half, two diamond, two diamonds and a half, three diamond, and then three diamond and halves. I'll go to the other side and explain how the other diamonds are explained over there. On this side of the table, as you can see, the table is in half. So now the diamond system is in quarters. So you'll start off with a quarter, then you have diamond, three fourths, one full diamond, a diamond and a quarter, diamond and a half, and a diamond and three fourths. I'll go to the other side and explain how the system works. The way this two, two rail kick shot works on the mirror system, as you can see, your cue ball will be starting on this side of the table. So this would be your zero. This is your half diamond. If your object ball is on the half diamond, you would divide that by two. So if you divide half by two, it will be a quarter. So if you hit the quarter diamond on the opposite side of the table, you should be able to hit this nine ball. For this example, I have the cue ball all the way to the far left. This is their starting point. And I have the object ball on the half diamond. So you divide half into two, giving you a quarter. So you would have to aim at the quarter diamond on the opposite side of the table to hit this object ball. You have to also apply run English. For this example, it's gonna to be top right. Let's go ahead and try this out and see if it works. I set up another example. As you can see, I have the object ball on the third diamond. This is a diamond and a half. So you do a diamond and a half divided by two, making it 75. So if I hit the three fourths diamond, I should be able to hit this nine ball. Let's go ahead and try this out and see if it works. The mirror system can be confusing because you're dividing the half diamonds into twos. I figured a way to simplify this and I want to show you a way how to do it. If you notice, we have seven chalks on the short rail, and as you can see, it's cutting the short rail into half diamonds. I'm going to be labeling these into numbers, and I'm going to the other side where you will see how the number system works. For the other side of the table, as you can see, they have four chalks laid out, and this was divided into quarters. I made it a lot simpler, where this is actually a true mirror system. I placed numbers on the chalk. As you can see, on this side of the table, I have one, this is going to be the two, the three, four, five, six, and seven. The opposite side of the table where the cue ball is going to hit, this is going to start off as your one, this is your two, this is your three, this is your four, this is your five, six, and seven. For a true mirror system, if your object ball is on the one, your cue ball just has to hit the representative diamond number one. If we move this object ball to the number two spot, you just have to hit the number two spot. We don't have to divide the halves into twos anymore. We're going to do the first example I did earlier. So I have the object ball again on the first diamond. So instead of dividing the half into twos, I just got to reference the one diamond on the opposite side. Just remember, you have to apply running English. For this example, it's going to be top right. So we're gonna go ahead and do another one where I did it on three. So as you can see, this is gonna be the three. And then we're gonna go, so instead of doing the diamond and a half, so you just count one, two, three. One, two, and three. I hit the third diamond, I should be able to hit this object ball. To make the mirror system even easier, as you can see, I have the object ball again over here, but this time you're going to get the difference between your object ball and cue ball. So where your object ball is, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to show you in the opposite side and how I number the other rail. The opposite side of the rail, now the numbers will start as your one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, and 10. I have it all the way to 10 because I, I can move the cue ball pretty much almost anywhere on the table. So let's go ahead and do the same example where the object ball is on the half diamond. But the only difference is we're going to do the difference between cue ball and object ball. So we're going to count the difference. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Starting with zero on the corner, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With top right on the cue ball, I should be able to hit this object ball. Why would that be important? Because the thing is, now say your object ball is over here and your cue ball is here. So you just remember, these are on half diamonds. So you just gotta count. One, two, three. So this is diamond three. If I hit the third diamond on the opposite side, I should be able to hit this object ball. One, two, and three. So for this example, as you can see, I have the cue ball on the long rail and the object ball on the short rail. The biggest thing is on the long rail, there are increments of one. On the short rail, the increments of half diamond. So you do the difference between cue ball and object ball. This is one, two, three, four, and five. So if I hit the fifth diamond on the opposite rail, I should be able to hit this, up, this object ball. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. For this example, as you can see, object ball and cue ball is pretty spread out. So we're going to get the difference between the cue ball and object ball. We're going to count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. We're going to count to the 10th diamond on the opposite side, starting with 0. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So if I aim at the 10th diamond, I should be able to hit that object ball. Now let's go ahead and try where the object ball and cue ball are pretty close together. So this is one, one diamond away. So if we aim at the first diamond on the opposite side, I should be able to hit this object ball. To make the mirror system a lot simpler, just remember, get the difference between your cue ball and your object ball. Where your cue ball is and your object ball is on the short rail, they're always gonna be on the half diamond system. If your cue ball is on the long rail, it's always gonna be a full diamond system. Just remember, the first rail is always gonna be in quarters. So let's go ahead and move on into the plus system. That's gonna be the next kicking system. Many of you guys probably seen this before. This is called the plus two system because the first diamond starts off with the two. Then it goes to your three, four, five, six, and seven. And then on the long rail, it goes as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The way this system works is you will get the difference between your cue ball and your object ball. For this example, it'll be one, two, three, and four. So if I aim at the fourth diamond, I should be able to hit that nine ball. For the plus two system, there is actually a benchmark where the cue ball will be on the third diamond on the long rail and the fifth diamond on the short rail because if you count the difference, it'll be one, two, three, four, and five. But if you line up your diamonds, your cue ball is not on that track. So technically, this is the three and five. For my table, I actually have to put less spin to get into this corner pocket. So for this example, I have the cue ball um, off the rail and I have the object ball on the rail. So you would see where the cue ball is. So it's on the second diamond. One, two, and you would do the difference between your cue ball and your object ball. One, two, three, and four. So you would line up your two and your four 
and you notice the cue ball is not on that tracking system. So you would keep subtracting another diamond. You're three and three, and you notice your cue ball is pretty close to it. So you do a parallel shift. So if I hit between the two and three, I should be able to hit this nine ball. All I gotta do is for my table, I apply left spin, and I should be able to hit. I set up another example, but this time the cue ball is on the rail, and this time the object ball is away from the rail. So we'll do the difference again. So the cue ball is your one, two, three, and the difference between object ball and cue ball is one, two, and three. Did you notice you have a bit off the rail? So this is almost one, it's one full diamond away, so you would add another diamond. So you would one, two, three, and four. So line up by three and four, and do my parallel shift. So if I hit between the three and four, I should be able to hit that object ball. So one thing about the plus system, every table is different. For my table, I have to do extreme left or extreme right. It's not a running English. Because when I do a running English, I always hit long. So some tables play short and some tables will play long. Normally on a three cushion billiard table, uh, three and five will always make it to the corner. So let's go ahead and move on to another kicking system. This one's actually my favorite because it's a lot easier to do. My favorite kicking system is the parallel system. The reason why I like this system a lot is one, you don't have to count diamonds and it works on all four corners. The way the parallel system works is you get the difference between your cue ball and your object ball. For this example, I have the nine ball directly in the middle of the, between the two balls. So you would slide your cue stick in the middle of the opening of the pocket and then do a shift to the first rail where your cue ball was right. The biggest thing is for this system to work, you have to apply running English. So let's go ahead and try out this example. So let's get between the cue ball and object ball. So we're determining it's right here, right on the nine. We'll slide our cue stick in the middle of the opening of the pocket, do a shift. This is my first point on the first rail. If I hit this point, I should be able to hit that object ball. So we're gonna do another example where the cue ball is over here again, but we're gonna use the second, second corner. So the cue ball and object ball are in the same place again, but this time we're using a different corner. So we get the halfway point between the cue ball and object ball, and we determine where the nine ball is. We'll slide our cue stick in the middle of the opening of the pocket, and then do a shift. If I hit this point on this first rail, I should hit this object ball. And we're gonna go ahead and go to the other rail and see if this system works. So now we're gonna do another corner. As you can see, the cue ball and object ball are in the same place again, and the nine ball is between the cue ball and object ball. So you would split, get the opening of the pocket and do your shift. Once you get your shift, get your in point, and you should be able to hit that object ball. We're gonna go ahead and shift to the other corner and see, to see if it also works there. For the last corner, as you can see, I have the cue ball and object ball in the same location. The nine ball is between the object, object ball and cue ball. So you would slide your cue stick to go to the middle of the opening of the pocket and then do a shift to your first rail and get your aim point. Once you get your aim point, you should be able to hit that object ball. I just did a brief explanation on Darren Appleton's mirror system, the plus system, and the parallel system. One thing about these systems, it requires running English on the cue ball. It also requires a lot of practice because you have to know how to apply the spin and the feel of the cushions. 
Hopefully this video was informative. Stay tuned. We're going to do three real kick shots. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe me. Don't forget to thumbs up. Bye bye. <laughs>